Isaiah chapter 19. Psalms is the 19th book of the Bible. The burden of Egypt. Now, Egypt in the type in the Bible is a type of the world. And it's usually not a friend of God and Christian or Israel. Matter of fact, God will tell Israel, don't go back into Egypt. Egypt was only good to one ruler, and that was Joseph. And we're going to see the burden of Egypt. We're going to see the tribulation of Egypt. Then we're going to see Egypt get right. And by the time we close up this chapter, let's see, for God's not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want to see the Egyptians go to hell. And we're going to see the mercy and grace of the Old Testament of people that God says, don't go back. Don't get their horses. Don't get their wives. Don't go back to Egypt. We're going to see a good outcome of Egypt. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rises on a swift cloud. Psalms 104.3 and Ezekiel 1.4. That pictures the cherubim. That pictures the mercy seat. Talk about a UFO. And it has those clouds, has some reference to the end of the tribulation and the second advent of Jesus Christ. Behold, I come with clouds. He comes with clouds for the Christians at the rapture. We shall meet in the clouds and in the air meet Jesus. And he said, woe unto them that desire the day of the Lord and the day of darkness and clouds, I believe. Shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, knocked over. 1 Samuel 5 1. That was the uh, Philistine Dagon was kicked over before the Ark of the Covenant. There was a time those 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 gods of Egypt, those idols, they, they were moved because the river was flooding. God will move them right down to the ground. I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, civil war. And they shall fight everyone against his brother, civil war. Everyone against his neighbor, civil war. City against city and kingdom against kingdom, civil war. America had a civil war. Israel and Judah constantly had civil wars. I don't know. I think maybe America may be going back to a civil war. The spirit of Egypt. Now, you've got to be careful because the, the, the modern Bible say, and God's a spirit. The modern Bible doesn't say, and God is a spirit. A spirit of many spirits, because there are many spirits. Here's a spirit of Egypt, which would be a type of the world and idolatry. The spirit of Egypt is in the world. It's in the churches, idolatry. My friend, even Paul said, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Paul. That's idolatry, that's the world. And he says, aren't you not carnal? And in Baptist churches, never mind the other denominations, in Baptist churches, you know, there, there's carnality in the spirit of Egypt. All are welcome. When God tells his people, come out, don't go. Go e into the world. Didn't say bring the world in. The spirit of Egypt shall fail. In the midst thereof of Egypt, its own failure would be in Egypt. I will destroy the council thereof, whatever committees, wherever they get together, I'll destroy it. And they shall seek to the idols. Oh, Mr. Idol, Mr. Gods, what's my horoscope for today? If I rub your belly, if I burn incense to you. You know, you find a lot of that, I'm told, uh, I can't be sure, but I have been told you find a lot of that in baseball. That there's a lot of, uh, of idolatry, there's a lot of uh, superstition in the game of baseball. And, to the, and I could be wrong about that statement, but that's what I've heard. And to the charmers, snake charmers. And to them that have familiar spirits, there's another spirit. John says, try the spirits. I'll tell you another spirit that's in the churches today, the Christmas spirit. 
the Temu spirit. Try the spirits. Is there a Holy Spirit? Paul said there's another Jesus, there's another, there's another gospel, and there's another spirit. Oh yeah, I believe in another spirit. And the wizards. Magic. Egypt is known for its wizards. They had the magicians in the time of Moses and Aaron. I mean, think about those stupid magicians. Call flies in Aaron. Here comes the fly. Mr. Magicians, we'll have more flies. We didn't have enough. You had to make more. And the Egyptians will give over into the hand of a cruel lord. That would be the Antichrist eventually. To a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. And when God says it, you better believe it. The water shall fail from the sea. Nile. I don't think that's ever happened with the Nile River. I didn't do a search, but I don't think it's ever been. At least I would have been taught in the public school system because they do a whole series on Egypt except Joseph. Except Moses. And I think with all the Egyptian, I mean, they have a whole school season dedicated to Egypt. I think there would have been a class that would taught us at the time that the, the Nile River were gone dry. Look, the river shall be wasted and dried up. Even the time of Moses and Aaron, the river turned completely to blood, but it didn't dry up. Joshua 5 says there will be no rain. Elijah will call for periods of drought in the tribulation. This is a tribulation passage. This will be the remark of, of uh, Elijah. There will be periods of no rain in the tribulation period. And then what's ever left over, Moses says, okay, Elijah, watch this. What's ever left over, turn to blood. You realize what the Bible says about those two characters in tribulation? At their will. He did that. Moses, that's watch this. Joshua, watch this. Ow! Who hit me? Fire comes out of their mouth and destroys them, the Bible says. Moses and Elijah are going to be two great characters. Look to everything that Elijah did. He destroyed the prophets of Baal. He put them to shame. Moses, all the plagues. And they shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up. Defense is some kind of military port. The Bible also says the tribulation period, one third of the of the, the shipping will be destroyed. And shall be empty, dried up, and the reeds and the flag shall wither. That's the plants along the, the river. The paper reeds by the brooks. That's your papyrus. There's your papyrus. Paper. By the mouth of the brooks and everything sown, put out to grow, by the brooks shall wither. Plants be driven away and be no more. They're, they harvest and they grow things along the Nile River for plantation, for crops, for food, <clears throat> for papas, for products. God says it's going to be completely, totally wiped out when that river is wiped out. I mean, that Nile River is a god to Egypt because that Nile River is many things to Egypt. Like I said, I don't think history is recorded in email and text me if you do know, but I don't think that Nile River has ever ever completely dried up but God said it will one day they were astonished in exes when it turned to blood imagine when Pharaoh steps out to go take a bath where's the water where's our God he's gone the fishers the fisheries Shall, uh, shall mourn. And all they that cast angle fishing, the brook shall lament. And they that spread nets fishing upon the water shall languish. Why? There's no more water. There's no more occupation. There's no fish. 
Like I said, I don't think this happened. But it will happen. And if it did happen, it will happen again. Now, I know under Moses, that all the fish, when the water turned to blood, the fish died. And the Bible says it stank. At this point that God's speaking about through Isaiah, there is no water. That's going to be Elijah. And whatever's left over, Moses is going to say, hey, okay, now turn it to blood. I wonder how many people are going to think of Exodus. Not many, because the Bible says when Jesus comes, they don't even know who he is. Many, you know, moreover, they that work in fine flax, and they that weave networks, shall be confronted. Sewing industry. They shall be broken in the purposes thereof. We got a purpose to make a living. We got a purpose for a career. We got a purpose for manufacturing. Broken. All that makes sluices, that streams, floodgates, artificial air, uh, artificial irrigation, and ponds for fish. And they have little areas where they, they have ponds just for fish, to grow fish, for, for, and they're going to be dried up. All the irrigation is going to be failing. Surely the princes of Zone are fools. The council of the wise counselors of Pharaoh has become brutish, just animal-like, just gongster crazy. Give us the financial report. We're dead. That's what that's what they came to Pharaoh one day. So Pharaoh, don't you realize Egypt is destroyed? Will you just let them go? Egypt is going, to, I mean, Exodus is going to repeat itself through Egypt. That's why you read and study the Bible. Can you imagine us Christians up in glory? I, I don't know how it's gonna happen. As the events of the tribulation is going to happen, can you just see the Bible up on a board? And Jesus with the pointer stick right here. This is where we are in Exodus right now, folks. And you can imagine a couple of Christians sitting in the back row. And I didn't read that. I don't know what he's talking about. I didn't read that. I didn't read the Old Testament. What a shame. I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings. Where are they? Where are the wise men? They died out because of no food and no water. Or they've left. Like uh, uh, Naomi's husband. And, uh, no food? We're out of here. Bye. See you. Let them know what the Lord of hosts has purpose upon Egypt. The princes, here's the government. The princes of Zoan are become fools. Become fool. They were they were they were not foolish, but they became fool. The princes no are deceived. They weren't deceived, but they're now. They have seduced Egypt. That was the magicians in Exodus. It's all coming back. They also seduce Egypt. Even they that are the stay of the tribes thereof. You know, you rely. You trust. And the government's falling apart. America's going to get that pretty soon. Too many Christians trust on the government and not God. I, I'm amazed at what's being posted I'm just amazed how I, I, I'm waiting. It's not going to get better. Not by the response of Christians. It's going to get far worse. Because the attitude of Bible professing Christians. That they can't understand that God puts a man into office. But the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit. King Ahab think it was. God said, all right. Says to a lion spirit, go and seduce his prophets. And I'm going to wonder what kind of spirit now is going to show up in America. It's going to be a prideful spirit if it's the attitude of America. Ahab wanted a lie. That's why he had his false prophets. 
The king said, is there a prophet of the Lord? Oh, yeah, I hate him. He doesn't prophesize any good. I want an evil report. So he wanted a lie, and God says, I'll send you a lying spirit. And if God were to send a spirit next into America, it would be a prideful spirit. That wouldn't be good because pride is a sin. A perverse spirit. That would be the kind of spirit we get in America too. Perverse. Sex. Education is the gods of America. And they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof. Same with America. As a drunkard man staggers in own vomit. You know God's like in Egypt? You're like a drunk. And you don't even realize it. you're just in your own filth. God likes the church age as God vomiting. But God ain't going to roll in it. Neither shall they be any works of e works for Egypt. Oh, we're going to have a relief program. We're going to send relief to Egypt. We're going to get a, a, a live Egypt per, uh, uh, concert. No, you won't. Which the head or tail, branch or rush may do. In that day, oh boy, shall Egypt be like unto women. Oh God. You male chauvinist pig God. It shall be afraid. Didn't Peter say women are like unto a weaker vessel? That's what God says the Egyptians are going to be. The men are going to be just like, they're going to be feminine. Man, that's, that's today. The males today are feminine. Male buns and male earrings. and But not just the looks. It says, it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts. Egypt is going to be afraid of God and the plagues. There's something coming worse in Egypt than COVID-19. And you know what the reaction of Egypt's going to be? Oh my God, bro. It's not going to be the reaction of the world today. They're going to recognize it is the hand of God. And they're going to fear the plague, whatever it is, and God. That ain't America. I can name you pastors today. Well, you know, Donald Trump, your president, and the vaccine, and everything's going to be hunky-dory. No, because the nation ain't getting right. The nation ain't repenting. And don't give me this nonsense of the modern lad is seeing, you know, we said this prayer and everything's getting well and done me. Listen, the rapture will, 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 will divide all those prayers. Which he, God, shaketh over it. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. <laughs> They've been welcomed, Judah. <laughs> Buy our horses, take our women. We love your money. And when the time of Jeremiah... And, and the people come to Jeremiah and say, hey, we want to hear from the word of the Lord. What should we do? And Jeremiah says, stay here. King of Babylon's already came. The, the city's all destroyed. And God says, stay here. Don't go to Egypt. And they kidnap Jeremiah and Baruch and take them too into, into Egypt. And God says, all right, Egypt. I forget what he says, but take something and, and put it in the ground of the brick hill. And I'm here to tell you that Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar's army is coming and he's going to get Egypt. Because I told you not to go. And Egypt's going to learn from their. I'm afraid of Judah. A terror in Egypt. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid of himself. Great fear and anxiety. Because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he has determined against it. In that day, oh boy, shall five cities in the land of Egypt, and check out Zephaniah 3, 8, and 9, 
because it says Elena speak the language of Cana, Hebrew. There's your Hebrew. <laughs> it's not now. You see, the devil gets the, oh, we can speak Hebrew and Greek. That ain't for the church age. We speak English. The devil will always get you to do something now that's not meant for now. For later. I'm sure in the tribulation period that the devil will have people to believe. Believe on the Jesus Christ alone without works. Where today he's got people, you know, you know, do this and believe on Jesus to be saved. The devil always gets it messed up. And gets the people messed up. Hebrews is coming, but not now. And swear to the Lord of hosts. Oh boy, look at that. One shall be called the city of destruction of the five. Five is death. Jerusalem's called in tribulation period the city of uh, Sodom. In that day, uh oh. Shall be an altar unto the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. That's not there now. A pillar and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. In Egypt, there is coming an altar and a pillar to God Jehovah. As the fear of God, verses 16 and 17. And it's the sign of tongues, verse 18, Hebrew. Egypt is going to turn their fear to God. And the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. Now watch Egypt get right. Now watch this. And it shall be for a sign. I thought signs were for Jews. And they are. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. You see that Hebrews in, in, in verse 18? And, and Acts chapter 2, they all spank in tongues. That was a sign. And Paul says tongues are for a sign to the Jews. It's also going to be a sign to the Egyptians. Not the church age. Don't run this during the church age because this is not church age doctrine. It shall be a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. They shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. The Antichrist. Egypt might be one of them nations of the sheep that help Israel. Did not the Pharaoh of Joseph help Israel? Yes, he did, Jacob. And he shall send, God shall send them a savior. Well, who's that? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The king of kings, the Lord of lords. All right, all nations gather before me. Now, now this is a possibility. Egypt on my right side. But Lord, why? Because you took care of my people. And you feared me. Isaiah chapter 19. We might be able to name one of the sheep nations. I'm, I'm, I'm speculating. I could be wrong. But I don't think this is going to go on during the church age. I don't think it happened in history. Of course, if it did, this public school system would not mention this. But again, that Nile River has not gone dry. And a great one, Jesus Christ, he shall deliver them. <laughs> so it's not Old Testament. It's second advent. Why don't you read the Old Testament?
and the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Jehovah. And we've seen in other places, despite what the Jehovah Witnesses say, we've seen that Lord to be Jesus Christ. Shall be known to Egypt. And the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, the day of the second advent. How do you know they know the Lord? Look at verse 16 and 17. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. And shall do sacrifice and oblation. That's the law. In the tribulation period, in the millennium, you are back under the law, not the church age. Yay, as the devil said, but God says, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. This is the people that God said, don't go back. This is the people, this is the type of the world. Every type does not go 100%. And we're seeing it right now. In that day, uh-oh, no, wait a minute, no, it's verse 22. And the Lord shall smite Egypt, Acts 13, 14, 17. He shall smite it and heal it, Ethiopian eunuch. And they shall return even to the Lord. God gives them a butt lashing, and for the butt, butt lashing, they say, Lord, we want to get right. We're sorry. And repent. America's not doing that. The world ain't doing that today with COVID-19. They shall return to the Lord and shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. We're not being healed. Oh, the show. You wait to see the side effects of that, of that vaccine. Oh, by the way, there's two rounds of the va vaccine. Imagine what you'll have to do to get the second round. I don't trust the government. And that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And Assyria shall come into Egypt, and Egypt into Assyria. And the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. That's another type of antichrist. In that day shall Israel be third with Egypt. I thought Israel wasn't supposed to have anything to do with Egypt. They're in union. And with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. Israel, Egypt, and Assyria. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless. Who? Israel, Egypt, and Assyria. Saying. Watch it. Now this is God saying it. Ready? Blessed be Egypt, my people. Every time he said my people, that's been Israel. That is not today. That was not Old Testament. Now I know a missionary that goes over Egypt and and he witnesses Jesus Christ and he gives them gospel check and he does dental work for them. But he you know he comes back. Hey, did everybody in Egypt get saved? No. Why would you think? I don't, I'm just because Isaiah 19 has not been accomplished yet. It's yet in the future. Egypt will be called my people by God. And Assyria, the work of my hand. And Israel, my inheritance. How, how's that? That's remarkable. 